What's happening, y'all? This is Todd Wilson with another episode of Elevate Your Game. Today, we have the head coach, assistant athletic director of PMA, and then we have the head coach of West Coast Elites Under Armour 16U, Dante Archie. My yeah, brother. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Yeah, Thank yeah. you for coming down or yeah. coming all the way up the nah, freeway, man. Coming good. to the studio. I appreciate it. Was good. It. It was good. Awesome. So, we like to start this show off with the Wall of Hoop movies. Your favorite hoop movie of all time and why? Uh, it's, it's a tough one because there's a lot of good ones, but I think I'm going to have to go above the rim um, just because the aspect of growing up playing basketball, um, living in the inner city with the extra stuff with the streets. So, so it, it kind of combined everything into one and it was like a reality seeing the stuff, um, being around it, going outside, playing, like you seen all that stuff, then got to go play basketball. So it... It that one was probably my favorite, but it, it's a tough one. It's a lot of great movies. Yeah. Did you have a uh, Marlon Wayans character? You had one of those in your hood. Uh, <laughs> the dude no. who is like thought he could hoop, but he really oh yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 no for sure a thousand percent. He wasn't as goofy as 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 he was, but yeah it was it was one of those. But guys, so, well, yeah. Marlon was still about the business because yeah. he, he the one that smoked birdie at the end. So, yeah hey, yeah you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah he, he definitely did get him so. No, absolutely. I think we all had that homeboy who was like trying to hoop, but they yeah. really wasn't dedicated. So mm -hmm. no, like you said, it's, uh, definitely a lot of. He was a real homeboy though too. That's, he was that's a real, real homeboy. Though. He, he, was. he was. That's for sure. I don't, I don't know if uh, Kyle, Lee, Kyle Lee Watson was though, because he kind of left him hanging when he was getting. No, he kind of went after him. Anyways, yeah, he had I go watch above the rim. He had a lot going on. He had a he lot did. going on. He did. Um, so when did you fall in love with basketball? Uh, Young age. I don't remember the age, but I remember my mom telling me because I used to play at uh, Baldwin Hills Park. Okay. And she used to tell me I was a little kid and I was at the three point line throwing up threes, <laughs> but couldn't, wasn't getting it to the rim. And I just told her one day, like, I'm going to start making threes. And eventually I did. So it, it was a young age, really young age when yeah. I was little. So. Did you play other sports growing up or was basketball pretty much? You know, at that time in sports, it was you play whatever the sport was. It was in at that time. So mm -hmm. if it was basketball, it was in. You play basketball, football. I even play baseball. I wish I would have played soccer, but I never played soccer. Right. As a now kid. we tell kids, hey, play yeah. soccer early, so yeah. footwork. But that. yeah, so that I played all the sports, and I was one that was good at all of them. I probably my best sport was probably football, but I just mm -hmm. loved basketball so much. I just played basketball. Yeah. When did you flip the switch and know that you were serious about basketball? Like when you started putting the work in towards it. To uh, AA, AAU was, was, was huge at that time, um, especially with traveling to Florida, playing in AAU. What, so what grade? What grade this you? was, man, I would say, I think like fifth, fourth, fifth, sixth, okay. somewhere around yeah. there. Um, I played with James Harden with LA City Wildcats. I played with Brandon Jennings. Where, um, I played with DeMar DeRozan. Um, so I, I played with a lot of dudes that, you know, was crazy work ethics. My work ethic wasn't that crazy, but like dude like DeMar was in the gym every day at that age, like yeah. working on his game. Um, so around that time, um, we went to nationals, played against uh, P. Miller, Romeo, all of them. Oh, so yeah. it was just, when you get in that aspect of the, the realm of the arena, everybody there, and you start to see how much it makes people happy and how intense the games are, it just like you fall in love with that. Absolutely, absolutely. So you say you weren't as committed to working out then. Um, yeah. Being a coach now, what would you tell Lil Dante then? <laughs> oh, I would tell him when, because my brother, Damar used to call my brother like, hey, I want to go to the gym. And my brother used to call me like, I'm going to the gym with Damar, you want to go? And I'd just be like, nah, I don't want to go. Mm. And my mom, was she didn't always make me like go mm. and it's not nothing on her fault my brother was trying to tell her like no you gotta go but she never made me go but I would just tell him like maybe if you'd have went you would still be playing in some realm right, um, right. but that's why I'm here now coaching yes. um, our kids and it's sometimes it'd be tough because my mom be like look now you get on them about not working out mm. but you didn't do it back then so you see the, the difference so that's why I'm on my um, players a lot because they you know they get through that realm where, it's, you know, it's tough. It's not easy to work ethic. But I'm here to push them and try to get them to where they see the light. So sometimes they, you know, get it. Sometimes, you know, they don't. But they're, they're there for it. 
Yeah, I always think that whatever we're investing into them, sometimes we see a, a immediate result. Sometimes this is way down the road where mm -hmm. they're like, coach, thank you for showing me that. Like you said, like you're just reflection. Like, Yo, your brother was trying to get you in the gym and get you there. Like, yeah. dang, thank you. You yeah. were trying to do something. And, yeah. And it's still something in you now to kind of give back as well. So. And we used to get into it a lot about it and didn't speak for a little bit just because <laughs> of that aspect. But, you know, mm -hmm. then I didn't understand it. But now older, seeing everything. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. Um, so moving into, you know, I was elementary, middle school, kind of the same thing. AAU ball. Um, any experiences, like you said, you went to AAU nationals and all mm -hmm. those different experiences. Now these kids got tournaments every weekend. Yeah. I don't even know if they go to the AAU Nationals no, in, like, no, Florida. Yeah. And actually, like, I know we have a couple California teams out there, mm -hmm. but, like, that was the highlight of us growing yeah, up. Yeah. With that in the California State game yeah. down in San Diego. Yeah, um, yeah. I remember for myself. So, no, like, what what was so valuable about those experiences, um, you know, outside of just the, like you said, playing with those players who made it to the top, yeah. you know? Just for me, especially my first time going to Florida with Nationals, um, didn't really family didn't really have money to go so having parents of players that play the same position as me that's behind me pay for me to go like that was like wow the one that was just the biggest thing and that's really what got me into like just how i am today with just helping people if i can um, because stuff like that i wouldn't have been able to go i wouldn't have been able to experience it i might have not fell in love with basketball who knows um but so that's really what got me the most. That was the biggest thing for me was seeing them. And then the, the Hazures, Kevin Hazures, that's the family. It was another family. I don't know why right now I'm drawing a blank on the names, but those two families have sons at, in my position behind me, and they found a way to pay for me to go because um, my mom couldn't do it. So um, that was that was big for me. Man, no, that's huge. That's that's man parents do that more yeah. <laughs> go help the people out who need the help that's dope man yeah. um the um so playing uh who was your coach and what team was it when you went to the AU nationals uh it was i've i've went to a couple um like i said i'm drawing the, i know his name is coach kev um he was the first one that was my first time going to nationals mm -hmm. that was really my first time going on my own like without yeah. nobody um with me but obviously the parents and stuff was there for me but you know everybody else got their mom and dad there and i'm just there by myself so that was a different aspect for me but that got me ready for leaving for college by myself because right. i was everywhere i traveled i was by myself my mom was on dialysis so she couldn't she couldn't travel mm -hmm. with me so everywhere i went as a kid i was by myself so wow. um, that's it helped me a lot so that's good that's good and then moving on to high school, was Jay Sarah like the neighborhood school that you knew you were going to go to? How did you get there? You know, some, well, I knew some I was rich gonna, history for sure. I knew I was going to go there because my uncle was, uh, rest in peace, uh, Coach Dewan Hurt. He was, oh, okay. He's been coaching there for a long time. Yeah. So I used to always go to the games as a little kid. Um, so rivalries, burners, verb, like all those type of games, I was there. So it just made me, it grew me into just wanting to go to Sarah from a young kid, just seeing rivalries and all that. So that's just was like, I love rivalries. It's not really no rivalries no more in high school basketball to where you walk up at five o'clock and it's a long line. Right, um, right. And it's tension between the fans. Now you go to games, it's packed because they want to see the game. Yeah. But back then it was tension with the, the schools, you know, mm -hmm. all that type of stuff. So um, that's how I wanted to go to Sierra is really because of my uncle and that's being dope. at all the games and stuff. That's dope. And so going there, kind of following the legacy, you know, you got the, the Poos, the yeah. uh, man, just all those guards, right, going mm -hmm. in there. What was the expectation you set for yourself? And did you know that you were going to be, you know, a college level player stepping yeah. into high school? Uh, I wanted to be I wanted to be one of the best coming in. Um, I wanted to be to leave and have a lay history there, and I think I did it to some extent, not to the highest level I wanted to, um, but part most partially is on me. But it was it was fun being at Sarah. That was some of the best four years of my life. Um, a lot of my friends today, best friends, they went to, we went to Sarah, so we got group chats. We go to 
dinners and all those type of stuff. So a lot of my friends today are from Sierra. So it was, it was a great experience for me. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. You said uh, part of that was your fault, right? Not leaving the legacy that you know that you thought you were going to leave or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. What does that mean exactly? Um, and who, you know, for a kid who's stepping into high school now, right? You got mm-hmm. some you got some really good yeah. freshmen on your team. Yeah. What's the message to them so they make sure that they leave the stamp that they want to leave, you know, in the game? Work ethic, work ethic um, could have been a whole lot better. Um, did know, kind of, didn't know, kind of, but. It was there. Um, I really was a class clown. I was a jokester. wasn't really serious about school. Um, didn't like school. I had a time where I was ineligible for a semester because of my grades and stuff. And so that was the that was a lot of stuff. I was immature to a certain extent. Just wanted to be, you know, funny and stuff in class. Even one time I had my mom, she showed up to class like oh, during the day. Yeah. So I had one of those moments. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it, it was, that's why I say it was partially on me because I was, that's how I was. And I don't regret it to an extent because, you know, that, that is what it is. But, um, I would, I just try to tell my kids not, you know, not to be like that and I'll be on them. Um, every day about it so and then sometimes you see yourself in them and you like right. you know that's you but you, <laughs> you can't let them you know do that but you do let them do it a, a little bit in terms of like on the court like playing physical talking trash like yep. the competition the competitive yeah, part I, you let them yeah. do that but it's just some of the other stuff you're like nah you can't let them that was you you can't let them do that yeah so. what was your what was your uh Signature, or what, what was what were you known for as a basketball player coming up through high school? Uh, defense, one to guard the best player every every night. Um, trash talker, physical, um, scored though. That was um, I was a real scorer, real three point shooter. I was MVP of the Delray League, so it, you know I, I did do that, but. Playing both ways, I, I love just as much as I love scoring. I love stopping somebody um, and talking trash. So, yeah, created a lot of rivalries with that type of stuff. Both, I need to know where both of those came from. Where did your love for defense and and you know being being a stopper? Where did that come from? I think it was just I think it was just in me because I was always like that. I was a I was a hot head player. Like um, so, I was all every game I was getting into it with, with people, um, and it wasn't like. I don't like the person. It was just when I got on the court, my I just changed as a person. Like I'm more laid back, cool, chill off the yeah, court. Yeah, no, it's kind of actually confusing yeah. me. Yeah, <laughs> but on the court, I was like, I was I was wild. Like I watched a lot of NBA as a kid, so I felt like I could go at five, six years old. I felt like I could go talk to the refs and communicate. Like I was like that. Like they used to call me technical boy. I used to get technicals in fifth technical grade. Technical boy. That's what they called. My brother called me because he was a coach. He was our coach too, and they used to call me tech. I used to get like a tech a game. Just wow. I don't know why it was, but that's just how it was. But later on down the line, Kobe, he was the one that like cause he played both ways. Um, so that's like. I, I don't put nobody. He's your goat. I don't put nobody above Kobe, ever. And even before, it, it's not just after. <laughs> okay, so we have yeah. to talk about this. Yes. From the the full picture of basketball, why is Kobe the goat? Just because of his attitude and mindset? No, it was just how he played the game. Every day he he came to play the game the right way, and he it wasn't like he just talked it. He did it like he. So LeBron don't do that. LeBron, I'm, LeBron is great. LeBron is <laughs> LeBron is great. Um, he does what he does, but I just felt like Kobe was just above all. Like it just the way he played the game, defense. Kobe could get triple doubles every day if he wanted to, but that wasn't what the triangle was about. Right. You know? Right. So they knocked Kobe for that. It's a lot of stuff I could go into how they knocked Kobe. Let's talk about it. We here. Yeah. Because I because this is a, this is great because. I have this thing where I think every LA cat thinks Kobe's the goat because they're in LA, uh, <laughs> and so yeah. And so if I and I'm, I'm Kobe's top, he's arguably one, yeah. two, three, right? I yeah. got Jordan, him, Bron mm. on mine. Yeah. I think Bron for me, I'm talking about like best basketball player. Mm. It's just his body of work over 20 years. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. No, what he, what and he, how he plays the game for me yeah. is like man. If I wanted to play like somebody, it's like that. Where Kobe. 
there was a moment, there was a couple moments where I, I didn't want, I wasn't a Kobe fan. And, mm. and I lived in LA, or I lived yeah. in IE, but, you know, yeah. LA. Um, and it was like a, when he turned to this little, the Black Mamba character, mm. you know, a lot of people loved yeah. it. And I was yeah. like, man, he mean. Like, dang. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. but showed you a side of the basketball game. So, yeah. you know, what's your, your, you know, overall view? If you're just comparing LeBron and Kobe. If we going off numbers, LeBron is going to have the best numbers ever. Like, so if, if somebody's a numbers guy, they're going to say LeBron is the GOAT. To me, if you look at basketball and what he did for himself, his teammates and other players, because a lot of the players say Kobe is the best. Right. And Kobe, he was a certain way. He, he was what he was, but that made Gasol who he was. That made Andrew Bynum who he was when they was winning, even Lamar Odom. Like, the toughness he brought to them that they had to have and the way he played the game is just, like, just to me it was more than Like, they say Shaq carried him, but they don't, They only talk about them finals moments. But, like, what about getting to the finals? Kobe stats against the Spurs, the Kings. You had to give him the ball at the end of the game. Um, and he did it without Shaq, too. So it... They, they knocked Kobe a lot. Like, he couldn't lose the NBA Finals when he was going through. So when he lost that final to the Pistons, oh, he can't be better than Jordan. But you got guys like LeBron that's losing finals, but they're still putting right. them above Kobe. But I, I think it's a more with, I think before Kobe had that case, everybody loved him. After yeah. that, it was kind of like. Yeah, a little wishy-washy. You know, it was. It was. You know, that. Yeah, that was a, it, was a char- it was a character thing, right? Yeah. It's like, man, we thought he was a golden boy. Yeah, you know, and I think that's what LeBron has kept is yeah. that that clean, yeah. uh, you know, uh, look and, and mm-hmm. what what the media sees, right? Yeah. But also, man, LeBron got a lot of dudes contracts that may not have been yeah, no. good contracts as well. Like, and that's my thing is like always comparing those, and I see I see the Kobe for sure. Yeah. I just uh, as a as a point guard mindset. Yeah, that LeBron man. It, no, no, he's, 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 he's done it. So it's, yeah. you know, it's, they're all in that conversation where you can have a discussion about it. I um, mean, you could pick LeBron, somebody else could be Jordan, or you could right. pick Jordan. It's, it's nothing, there's no wrong answer. It's just a good discussion to have with, with people when you meet somebody or you, you know, you never talk to somebody. They might change your mind on some, might not, but. No, I'm open for a discussion because yeah. it, it changed, you know, my, Jordan was my guy for, Ever, probably into the last two years. Mm-hmm. And I became a little biased because I've been able to, like, I actually worked with LeBron mm-hmm. for a couple summers. So that may have a little to do with it, yeah, too. Yeah. Because knowing, like, who he is as well mm-hmm. was pretty dope. Uh, yeah. And knowing how he plays the game. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I always like to see people's arguments with the, with the Kobe thing. And the, so. puppet, the puppet commercial, too, is like it, like it made you pick a side. Yeah, it did. <laughs> and I was a Laker fan. I was a Kobe fan. So when that yeah. came up, I was like, oh, I'm Kobe. <laughs> And it was like, I don't hate LeBron, but it's like, I'm riding with Kobe, so I'm right. I'm not with you. I'm with Kobe. So And then it just kind of just kept carrying. And it just wasn't nothing personal. It was just the, the fun of the, the commercial. And that's how they made it. Yeah. So I wish they would have been able to play some finals because I think it would have would have elevated right. even more. So. Right. No, that's dope. That's dope. Um, sorry. Nice little sidetrack no, conversation. No, no. But uh, uh, so... And you say you, you like to talk mess, so yeah. and, and get into it. Um, where what is that rooted in? Uh, where did that come from? I just think just being a hothead, <laughs> just being a hothead. So where did being a hothead come from? So there's I a don't know. so I had a, I had a short temper. I I'm pretty sure my short temper is not just light skin issues. It's more than that. My my short temper came from I had older cousins who used to pick on me. Like mm-hmm. they're from Louisiana, big boys. Like yeah. they just used to pick on me. So. I had a short temper because I had to protect myself. It was my mm. flight or fight yeah. type thing. Like, and so I, what they were doing to me, I would project to people on the court. Mm-hmm. I was the same way. I love defense. I was mm-hmm. always almost getting in a fight, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. And I kind of found what that was rooted in. Do you mm-hmm. know where that, that, that fire came from? No, I don't know where it came from. I, I, if I had to give an answer, I think it would probably come from watching defenders in the NBA and how they kind of played it. Mm-hmm. And you... To be a great defender, I think you have to have that mentality, like yeah. that hidden, just for no reason, just check, <laughs> like just yep. doing little small stuff, like it just. I don't know. I don't know where it came from, but if I had to take a guess, it was it was like that. And to me, talking mess, it like it 
changes my mode and it gets me going. Like yeah. especially if it's somebody I know that I'm playing against, things like that. So I think that's where it came from. But I don't know for sure if that's mm. the right answer, but I think that's what it is probably. How do you develop that in the player now? If they don't have it naturally, right? You know, we have a very um What's the word I want to use? Generation where they get everything they want. A lot of them, right? Yeah, and some yeah. some don't, but a lot of them do. They have trainers. They have all these things. And so that dog and grit that you have kind of growing up mm -hmm. to fight for your own mm -hmm. and playing pickup ball, which they don't do a lot either. Yeah. Um, where, how do you develop that in your players? I haven't, like, just tried to develop it into them. I just just coach and I coach toughness, coach hard. And I think that maybe does it um, mm -hmm. like this guy, you got to stop this guy. You got to, but I don't like teach it. Cause it's like, a lot of, they don't have it. Like you yeah. got, if it's just a player you see like, okay, he, but I don't see it that much in our, in, in this generation. Cause that's like, you see a dog now, he's going to stand out for sure because yeah. it's not a lot of the, those type of um, players nowadays. So I don't specifically like put it into them, but I'm seeing some of our kids now on our team that they're like in the games, they're talking trash, they're getting pumped up. So it, it might be there, not to the extent as it was for me, but mm -hmm. they're doing it somewhat. So yeah. no, yeah. they're an extension competition of the competition, brings it out too. Right. Yeah. And so if you're bringing that every day in practice and yeah. You're even, like you said, you coach them tough, so some of that's coming out of you, so yeah. you're naturally doing it. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and so, all right, so high school, um, known for your defense, um, building up to your senior year. Um, did you play varsity right away? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I didn't. Let's talk about it. Why, why, is, why is that so important to develop on a lower level, and what did you think that did for your game? You know, um, For me, it was more of it was a senior-heavy junior senior heavy team mm -hmm. um i felt because they some of my peers that i play AAU with went up and played varsity they didn't play a lot but they were still involved and i thought that i should have been also there but playing freshman helped me because it helped me grow more as a as a scorer yeah. um so I, I went to play freshman and they were supposed to move me up from freshman to varsity in the playoffs. And this mm. is something one of the assistant coaches told me, but they didn't because my uncle felt like people would say it's favoritism. Ah, uh, got you. So um, I didn't, so I played the freshman, and then the next year, that's when I was ineligible. Uh. Um, so I didn't get the, I could have played varsity, but my, I was hanging around the JV team a lot. So my uncle was like, you wouldn't come into the varsity game. So you felt like you wanted to be JV. So I played JV my sophomore year too. And then varsity, JV, I mean, varsity, JV, I mean, junior and senior year. Okay. Um, so that's the path I took. It's not nothing wrong with that. It's yeah. not a wrong path to take. I know today everybody wants to play varsity. Um, they feel like they play on a high eighth grade team. They feel like they got to play varsity, but it's a different level. Yes. Um, I have a player now that's a freshman, played on a high level eighth grade team. Um, and he's he's playing, he's getting in, but he's not playing a whole bunch of minutes. It's just a total different game. Yep. You go from eighth grade to the top level of high school in California, it's different. Speed, physical. Yep. You're playing against a 19 year old man. Yeah. <laughs> so it's there, but he's, 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 he's growing through the pains exactly. of, um, and yesterday he probably had his best game of the season. So yeah. just patience. I know it's not, it's, I know it's not a lot of that, um, from the parents, from eighth graders going to high school, they feel like they got to play right away, especially if they see somebody that they know that's playing a lot of yes. that school. Um, but everybody has a different path. Uh, and at the end of the day, the end goal is the, is the one that you should be striving for, not the beginning goal. So you don't want to be come in and, oh, I'm playing a lot of freshmen and senior years, like, oh, I'm stagnant. Yeah. Now the other guys pass you up and they right. get in scholarships, but you were just focused on the beginning, not the end. So that's, yeah. That's, that's why I tell, all, I try to communicate this to the eighth graders and it's tough because I tell them all year, like, things aren't going to be like they are when you get to high school. Mm -hmm. Hey, you, there's, you're not getting scouted like, you know, you're getting mm -hmm. scouted, but you ain't getting scouted. Yeah. There's not the structure. You're practicing mm -hmm. every single day except for Sundays mm -hmm. unless you have a game in high school. There's so much more to this. Mm -hmm. And 
it's okay to develop. You like you said, you want to be the best player when it's done, when it's your senior year, when it's time to get recruited. Even mm. colleges can't call you until the end of your sophomore year, yeah, the true. summer of your sophomore after your sophomore year. Be ready then, mm. not when you first enter. And they're like, these exactly what you said. I'm getting these calls right now, coach. I'm I'm not. Uh, they're not letting me do me. They're not. Um, you know, how do I get back to getting mine? I'm like, y'all are winning. Yeah. Your team is winning. You're on a high-level varsity team. And in, in these kids that are in the Mission League, like, you're yeah. in the best league almost in the country. Yeah. As a freshman, getting 15 to 20 minutes a game, don't worry about scoring. Yeah, that's what I, <laughs> that's what I, that's what I, that's what I tell the players, like, find a role. Learn how to play or be a role player. Like, so if you come in as a freshman, you're not, most of the time, you're not going to be a man. It's, right. I think only one, that I know of on a high-level team, there's only one freshman that's the man that I know of. Maybe it's somebody else that I'm missing. But go learn how to be a role player. Learn how to play the gaps. Go rebound. Um, get the loose balls. Be in, the, be in the help defense. Learn how to do that stuff first. Learn how to run the floor. Learn how to cut without playing with the yeah. ball. And then when you become the man, you know how to do the little stuff also. So that's what I'm preaching to my freshmen right now. Just learn how to play the game. Right. Learn how to run the floor. Get wide on the, on the fast break. Don't be so close. Um, just little things like that mean a lot. Learn how to rotate with your hands up. Yes. Learn how to talk. Learn how to uh, stunt. Like Just learn all that stuff first. And then you'll gradually go up and be the man. So then when you go to college, now you might have to, you went from being a man in high school and now you got to be a role player. You got to start all the way over. <laughs> but if you never yeah. knew how to be a role player, it's going to be tough for you to be a role player there and then you're yes. going to be uh, sitting on the bench. Mm -hmm. And then that's what hurts a lot of uh, student athletes now. They go to college and they feel like they're going to be the man when they go to college. And they not because that school already got a man. But if you come in and play the right way, like 10, 15 minutes later in the season, it might be creeping to 20, 25. What well, does more minutes do? You get more opportunities. Now you're scoring 10 to 12 points a game yep. from three to four at the beginning of the season. But, you know, it's it's easy to say it for me, but um, if, if they're not hearing that from people, yeah. then that's where the problem is. Their parents, yeah. even because their parents feel the same way. Like, yeah. And that's the thing is, like, if you keep working – and working on the right things, your opportunity is going to come. And it might come, it usually comes sooner than later yeah. if you're focused on those things. And so get with your coach. You're like, coach, what do you need me to do? Yeah. And when your coach gives you an answer, just accept it. Yeah. Don't try to battle. Like, oh, yeah. he just wants me to play defense yeah. or he just wants me to box out and rebound. Yep, you're right. Yeah. But become great at that. You'll earn more minutes. You'll get the opportunities that you're looking for to show what else you have in your game mm -hmm. and continue to work on your game. Yeah. And also, if you're sitting on the bench, if you're watching the game and you're sitting on the bench, if you don't play a whole game for five games, if you get put in in that sixth game, you should know what the team is lacking. Mm. So if they're lacking a guy that's not getting on the floor for loose balls, not taking charges, mm. not boxing out, whatever, not making open threes, whatever it is, not making the right passes, you'll stay in the game more yep. because that's what the team needs. And the coach knows that, and he's preaching that to everybody. So if you get in that game and you get in and you're doing the same mistakes they're doing, how are you going to stay in the game? Are you going to go back to the guys that's already in? Because if you're not playing, he feels like you're not as talented. But if you could find your way to get on that court and stay on that court, you could probably show that you might have been more talented and that we wasn't seeing the right things. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that because – you're, I love how you're acknowledging that sometimes the coach doesn't see it at first yeah. and then that you got to continue to prove yourself every day. Yeah. So no, that's great. Um, so working through high school, um, what was the biggest biggest rivalry game? What's the biggest game you remember in your high school career? Uh, you know, I want to say senior year. Like what, what was that moment where you're like, man, this is, you know, you knew you were kind of at the top, you know, being yeah. the MVP at Del Rey and all that. Um, it, was, it was probably a mixture um, of, Bishop Montgomery and St. Bernard's, those were like two big rivalries. Bernard's was the bigger rivalry because it was, that was long history. Bernard's started, you know, that happened once, kind of like when the Craven Twins was, was at mm -hmm. um, Bishop Montgomery. Um, but the biggest game was probably when we played Bernard's just because everything that happened outside of it, that was the game where we played on a Monday. 
and all the public schools were out of school. Wow. Like they didn't have school that day, so the game was just overpacked. Like they had probably two hundred people outside, just like you couldn't get in the game, but just was outside. And it was it was a big rivalry game. We ended up winning, but it was like some crazy stuff happened outside. It was like like somebody got stabbed, and it was just a whole oh, wow. it was a whole bunch of stuff that happened. But it was just the just the anticipation around the game from eight in the morning to everybody was talking about going to that game. Like I said, all the play, you got Westchester up there, Crenshaw, wow. Palace, every all all the schools was up there. That was like a, a big game. So it was just the anticipation from eight to when the game happened. It was just I've never seen that before. So you had, how'd you perform in the game? Oh, I did good. Did good. I think <laughs> we ended up winning by like ten. We had to get escorted out. It was just Wow. You know, we, I don't want to see nobody getting stabbed. It's like right. outside of that stabbing, right. that the the game was just electric from out people was outside cheering. It was just crazy. So yeah. that was probably the, most the biggest. Yeah, how did how'd you guys do in the playoffs? How how that fair? We out? we were we were, I think we lost three games that whole year, and we got to the playoffs in the quarters. And yeah. we, Colony came in, Tyler Lamb. Yeah. Um, he, I think he was a sophomore, freshman, sophomore. They had a guy named Michael Bostic, 6'10", 6'11", dunk everything. And I had, it was me and another player, um, name was Hakeem Washington. We had a bunch of young players. Okay. So we had Kevin Johnson, he was a freshman, like 6'9". We had Leon, he was like 6'8", first year playing really basketball. So Colony came in, warm ups, just boom, boom, <laughs> dunking everything, and we kind of got a little rattled by that. Um, and they, you know, they were they just were better than us that that day, and we lost in the quarters. We wanted to get to the championship to play Bishop Montgomery again, but we didn't get there. So that was that was one, a moment that I, w I was thinking in my head a lot. I wish I could go back because at halftime I would have kind of made sure that the young dudes. Was, you know, ready for the second half, but yeah. you know, you live and you learn. Right, right. Yeah. And those great experiences and things to remember now as a coach, right? Mm -hmm. You know how to take your players from where their mindset is yeah. to where it needs to be. So, yeah. um, so college, college. Uh, how did college recruiting go for you? You know, leading up to this, and um, you know, being able to choose to to mm -hmm. or continue to play basketball in college, which is awesome, no matter where you go. Yeah. So. High school, going to college, it was tough in the recruiting realm because back then you had to get your CDs and your tapes and mail them off to to the schools. I'm sorry, listeners, CDs are compact discs. Oh, yeah. uh, that's where you put this disc into a, yeah, <laughs> a DVD right. player or something, and it played yeah. things, like it played uh, the yeah. video. <laughs> yeah, you had to make individual, all those individual... Right. Yeah. And mail them off you had to, to burn it to the yeah, TV. Burn it on the, yeah, it was it was a process. Um, so that was the what it was then, and um, it didn't work out for me in terms of going Division One. But I, I went Division Two to, to Shadron State in Nebraska, um, which was a great experience for me. College town, um, just totally different world from Los oh. Angeles, and. Um, around totally different climate of people. Um, and climate in general. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> negative 15 degrees and you yeah. still gotta go to class. Yeah, so it was, it was different, but it was fun for me. Um, that's that's a place where I, I wanna go back eventually because um, that's kind of where I grew up as a person, being on my mm. own every day. Even though I had some people that was from here that went to the school too that I knew okay. before. Um, so. It was just, it was just a great experience um, from classes, meeting people, the parties, um, going to Walmart where they had everything there. Yeah. From getting your that was before Calif California Walmarts didn't they have the super Walmart. Yeah. That's when in the Midwest, like Walmart was a spot on Sundays. It's yeah. cracking because yeah. the whole family was there. It was yeah. almost a social setting yeah. in the Walmart. Yeah. yeah. So, I, so I was in Kansas. I was in Dodge City, Kansas. Okay. And so okay. probably the same little, yeah. little small town feel. Yeah, small town. One Walmart, a couple little food places. Yep. That's it. Yep. Yeah. What's your biggest takeaway? Would you encourage people, kids from LA, to get out of state and go experience somewhere else? Always, always. But if you can, if you're a basketball, if you're a sports player, not a sports player, regular student, if you can get away and go to college, do it. I know some people can't. Mm -hmm. Funds and college is a lot of money. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I understand that. But if you can get away for, for college, go, man. What does that bring? What is it? What does it uh, expose you to? Um, real you, life. Yeah. Real life. Um, making decisions on your own um, because at that time you can't. Your parents can't be there. Yeah. So you have to make a decision. You have to go through it, um, right or wrong, and that's that's what it is. So I love going away for college, like. Um, all my colleges except one when I came back for JUCO was was away and I, I loved it because you just grow up and you see life in a yeah. different realm um, and my niece she runs track at Oregon right now so she's on that's on nice. her own uh, so I, I, that's the best thing to do but I understand if you got to stay home right right but if you ever get a chance to go away for college it's, it's, it's the nice. best thing it made me it made me respect California a lot more too. Like yeah. going to go see how everything else was and like like I said I, like you said I enjoyed it too. Like I used to I got to focus on basketball. That's where mm -hmm. I did my most growth. Mm -hmm. And I consider Wichita partially my home. I was only there for 4 years, mm -hmm. but it felt like I was I grew up there almost because of when I was there and the connections I made and all those mm -hmm. experiences. But then I realized that just the speed of life wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because I'm from California. I, I'm, what I'm doing now, like yeah. I love doing stuff like this. And so yeah. coming back to, to LA or the Valley and like, oh man, this is nice. Like, yeah. And even my family still lives out there. So I go mm -hmm. visit them and I'm like, yeah, I'm here for five days and I'm out. Like mm -hmm. I, I can't be here yeah. that long. So you appreciate what you do have here in LA, the access mm -hmm. and the, the nice weather and all those things yeah. as well. So yeah. 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 Um, all right, so what was your experience like playing playing D two ba on the basketball side? Um, good coach. What what was the the feel, the flow of everything? I, I think a lot of kids don't understand that Division two basketball is just as competitive, if not more competitive, than Division one basketball. Yeah. So talk about that experience. Yeah, no. Right, um, to get to the D the D two D one, we um, we played D ones and it was good games. Obviously, I don't think we played any of, like the super high ones, but yeah. we played some. And it's not much of a difference, especially now. Especially now, it's it's, right. it's not much of a difference. Like, I think if they combine in some sort, some team like throw some teams into the, the NCAA tournament for D two, I think they'll come out and they, they'll win some games. Um, but from our at Chadron State, it was. I ain't gonna lie, I got caught up in partying, but yeah. I still was able to play at a high level. I still was leading us in scoring. I was, I think it was number two in freshman, all freshman um, voting for our our league. Um, but I could have been a whole lot better. But yeah. college, the life, it was like you're in a small town. It was just, I just got caught up in it, yeah. like. After games, Saturday games, going to party, just doing a lot of that stuff. So um, I don't think it's nothing wrong with it because I didn't progress as a player like I thought I should have. But it just wasn't for me. That's how I look at it. It wasn't for me to go play professional overseas or whatever. It yeah. was for me to be here and be a coach. So um, I still have fun playing the, the game. Um, I did it to my best. I was still one of the best players on the, every team I played in in college. Um, so I just, you know, the party life was was good. Um, how, how, how should a student manage that? Now, you know, looking back, yeah. you know, you said you party too much. You said that, so yeah. a little too much. Yeah. So how somebody who is leaving home and um, being exposed to what college life is like, and there's a lot of partying and opportunities to make decisions that can change your life, sure. right, good or bad, mm -hmm. Um, how, what advice would you give somebody to kind of manage that? It's, 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 it's tough because it just depends on who you have around you. Um, I had somebody around me that was like, he went to some, but he, his name's Jelani White. You, you oh, might yeah, know yeah. You, Jelani, yeah. he was my roommate. Oh, okay. okay. So he was like the strict one, make sure our rooms is clean. I was more just the, you know. <laughs> And I, I needed that from him because it was sometimes where I didn't go out because he wouldn't been always go. He went out sometimes. He was more the the one that was that's the one like a, a role model you should look mm -hmm. after when I was in college and I used to. Um, but I, it's it's tough. You just gotta live and learn. You gotta see it, go through it, and then if you're doing too much, eventually if you try to stop, it's hard to just tell you because college comes at you in so many different ways, and that's why. I tell a lot of our players, like, just 
Just stay focused. Just try to stay focused on the task. You're going to have fun because you're going to want to go to some of the parties because teams go. Yep. You know, it, it happens, but you just got to know what the limit is. And I didn't, I knew the limit, but I'm just like, nah, I'm, I'm having fun. <laughs> it, was, it was real fun to me. It was, it was, um, so, and it wasn't like I didn't go to parties in, in LA. I went to parties. So it wasn't like, oh, this is my first time having fun being out. Nah, right. I did a lot of that too. It was just, it was just to another level and I just had fun. So, I would just say just try to stay focused and if you do you know do it just try to not do it too much but it's it's kind of hard to tell um somebody to not experience life yeah because it's <laughs> you got to go through it uh, it's just yeah that that one's a tough one to say how to handle that yeah you just so i was probably like your roommate for me and cause so i didn't i did not i didn't take a, a drink i didn't drink alcohol till i was 25. So the, literally the day I graduated college, I didn't graduate college when I was 25. That was the first day I've ever took a shot of anything. Mm, okay. <laughs> and so I was always the designated driver. So gotcha. though I was going to the parties, I wasn't, you know, participating in all the festivities. Yeah. And so, and I was like kind of that dude, like, hey, man, we got we got practice in the morning. Let's yeah. go home a little early. I was kind of that dude. Yeah. I was, and, uh, I, was, I was like, especially when I was a red shirt. I was, <laughs> oh, yeah, you red shirt, yeah. I went to the workouts, coach chewing me out because I was, like, hung over in work. I was like, but I was just, yeah. No, no, it's, and it's a different experience because I've had, I had teammates that were doing that as well, and it's like, like you said, though, my, I guess I started experiencing life more so when I was done playing basketball but still in college where mm -hmm. I started, you know, going out more and, and doing yeah. all that. There is a moment in your life where you do that, yeah. and I, I think, the biggest thing that I learned and I, I continue to tell kids because we, you know, the kids that go on to college mm -hmm. and do the same thing. I had a kid who went to college and just wild out and he mm -hmm. was like NBA teams were looking at him mm -hmm. and had real opportunity, but let that life kind of catch up with him is like, hey, know your goals. Mm -hmm. And part of college is 100 percent the experience like mm -hmm. you do want to go somewhere where you gonna have a college experience. Mm -hmm. Also, just know where your goals are. Like you yeah. said, hey, it wasn't in your cards to go play overseas, so yeah. you enjoy yourself and yeah. you appreciate it. You learn what you learn. You're doing well. Mm -hmm. You're good. Yeah. It's like what what you want out of wherever you go, mm -hmm. you're going to get by what you focus on. Yeah. And so, you know, that's the biggest thing is like, yes, experience life, but also know what the what the goal is after all of this. It's like, hey, I'm just want to good get a good job, network, whatever. I want to go to the league, which is what a lot of these kids say. Yeah. But when you get hit with that opportunity, yeah. you gonna make the league choice, or you gonna make you yeah. know the choice that 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 may not lead you there. Yeah, so, it's, they yeah. say the league a lot, but it's it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. <laughs> it's all get. the work. Yeah. It's, it's, it's uh, three times a day. If you really want to be there, so yes. that's, it's, it's it's not easy at all. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, you were there for one year. I was there for two years. I redshirted, okay. uh -huh. and then I played um, my redshirt freshman year. Okay, and then so how did uh, what what made you decide to to leave there? And uh, that's when you came back to the Citrus. Yeah, I had a I had a real real good season. Like I said, I was second in voting for freshman of the year. Um, I was all state out there. They had they all state for uh, D two. So I'm just like, man. I think you know. I think I could play D1. We played against some D1s. I did good. So I'm just like, man, I, I think I can. And my, my, my one of my best friends, Hakeem Washington, he was at Citrus. Mm. So, and I know they had a great program. They just came off a uh, year before. They came off a championship. They had Troy Prane, uh, Bucci. So they, they had a real good team. And Hakeem was like, man, come over here with us. You know, blah, blah, blah. So... That's when I'm like, you know, at that time it wasn't no, you didn't really transfer D2 to D, straight to D1 because you right. had to sit out a year. So yeah. it was like, all right, so I'm like, okay, I'll go Juco. So that's when I decided uh, to go to Citrus. It was a tough decision because I had a lot of stuff going out there um, from friends, family, um, people just treating me great out there. Uh, so it was a tough decision, but I think it, it was the best decision for me. Rest in peace to Coach Bargain. He was the head coach there, but it just, you know, didn't see eye to eye on a lot of stuff. And then, like, a lot of it was me. I, I didn't, I wasn't a practice player. Um, so he, he didn't really like that, that I wasn't a practice player. But when the lights was on, it was just, you know, so he didn't understand that, that aspect of me not being, like, a full-on 
practice. What does that mean? So day. I'm gonna fly on the wall. What is Dante doing in practice? <laughs> that is uh, <laughs> not agreeable with coaches. I think it's important. Like, it's yeah. so important because yeah. kids do that now in high school. Yeah, no, no, so, they yeah. do. They do. Yeah. It's uh, it's just everything not going hard, um, going through the motions on stuff. Um, when he know, when he see me in the game, like okay, this is not the same <laughs> guy. Um, and I'm not saying it's right. Right. I'm not saying it's right, but you you do have to know your players. Um, and I know mine, so I know what you're getting from certain people. And he just didn't understand it. So before the first half of the season, we ended Christmas break. We was at um, Utah Valley. Mm. I think I had like 17, 18. We lost by like five to them. So we come back from Christmas break, and we have a whole new offense. Like, we throwing it into the post. We playing through the inside. So he, like, changes everything up. And mm-hmm. it's just like my stats is just going down, going down. And we it ain't like it's changing. We winning. It'd be different. Change winning. Right. Again. So y'all changing y'all. It's just losing. So it was just mm-hmm. like, you know, that was the aspect. I'm like, okay. And it wasn't just me. The players seen it on the team, too. They're like, right. man, why are you not? You know, so that was the aspect. That was a big aspect, too, of me saying, like, you know, it's time. To, I still had some good games, real good games after that. But it was just yeah. like consistently it wasn't there so I'm like you know that was the aspect of me like okay I think I should should leave but yeah the final water practice player it was just yeah I just every I didn't bring it every every time every day it's interesting because you're such a competitor yeah. right and so yeah. you like you know it where did you not have that competitive mindset against teammates or like saving your energy like what's the the thought process behind being a Yo, I'm a, I'm a gamer, so all you gotta care about is moving, yeah. right? I don't, I don't know. At that time, I didn't know. Okay. I didn't know what 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 the reason was. It was just how I was, and um, it's be crazy. A couple of years later, is when we get to the next step of the next colleges, you'll see the coaching is different and understanding what it is and what it takes. Because at the end of the day, coaches have to know like you want to win the game is you know where you win but I'm not saying you can let all the players do it but if you have a player that's like that you have to learn and you have to talk to the team as a whole about everything because every player can't be treated the same right so they try to put that on like oh well this kid's getting this treatment this kid it's just what it is it's life no, coaches have favorite players. Yeah. We got favorite players. Yeah. It's the kids who do what we ask them to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty simple. So you you darn right. Somebody's yeah. going to play over you, and I, not as a person. Yeah. We love all these yeah, kids yeah, as a person. Yeah. But as a basketball player, yeah. I don't like I don't like certain players. Yeah. And that's just what it is. Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's good. Um, so from junior college, so you're trying to go up to Division One. Did that opportunity happen? What happened next? Uh, so, yeah. After the season we got done, um, my, my boy DJ Shelton, Devon Shelton, went to Washington State. He, you know, he had a bunch of coaches calling him, so he like, man, a DU just called me. I'm not going there. Let me talk to the coach, see if I can get you over there. So he talked to, called the coach, talked to him. Coach like, man, send this film. Bam, you know, mailed it off to him. It's still the mailing. Mm-hmm. He had to mail it, so we mailed it off to him. They saw the film, they like, we want them, send the transcripts. So told the coaches, sent the transcripts. And at that time, when you transfer from JUCO to, to D1, you have to have, in that um, major, you have to have certain classes. So my classes from Shazen State didn't transfer to their major, so mm. I couldn't get in there. Um, so that didn't work out, and I was really the only Division One school that I had. So, um, Washington State, one of the assistant coaches, he called the Lewis and Clark State coach um, in Idaho, and he saw my film, he liked me, and that's where I ended up at. They had my major, so at the end of the day, another thing, I wasn't going, I didn't think I was going to go play overseas, and then it wasn't big on me. My focus was making sure what I wanted to do in my field, that I could get that major, so that was the most important thing. What was your major, by the way? Sports management. Sports management, okay, perfect. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then so, man, that I, that happens a lot, right, with the academic setting and, uh, you know, players, parents, 
make sure you're paying attention to those things, mm -hmm. the NCAA core courses, qualifications, and oh, when you go to a college, make sure they're, yeah. you know, you're going, make sure when you go pick a school, you're going yeah. to a school that has courses that can transfer yeah. over yeah. to yeah. other places in this, especially in this landscape. You're allowed to transfer yeah. once now. And yeah. so you got to be prepared for that. So we can't stress enough how important it is to have those academics or have somebody to talk to about those yeah. things. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's super important. Yeah. So. Um, all right, so Lewis and Clark in Idaho, man, yeah. you go to the boonies, Nebraska, yeah. Idaho. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, man, that was just, college was some of my best times. Yeah. Um, if you go to what, those, what city is it in? Is Lewis it? in Idaho, so it's right by. Um, it's like thirty minutes from Wazoo, from okay, Washington yeah. State. Probably, I mean, like forty minutes from Washington State. Probably like thirty minutes from University of Idaho. So okay. Was, it was close there, so I was going up to my boy at Washington State a lot. Um, going up there, it was a quick drive. It okay. wasn't long, um, but going there is like it was fun, man. You walking down the street and people driving, waving at you, and just the whole that culture. And yeah. you come back to Cali, and it's like all right, everybody's mean mugging each other. So <laughs> it was different, but that was college. That Lewis and Clark, it was it was it was real fun time. So you played there for two years. Two years. Two years. Yeah. Okay. Um, First year, I was um, all all conference, um, scoring a lot of points. Senior year, coach brought in guys, um, and I don't know what it was, but at first he, like I was all conference. Me and this guy, PJ Boltz, he was the two best players, and then we go senior year, and I'm coming off the bench at the start. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm coming off the bench. No discussions about it or nothing? Like, no, not really. No, just <laughs> just coming off the bench. Um, and was, it this, was this the practice player syndrome, do you think? Or like what? It was never said. It was never okay. said why it happened, but I don't know if he was trying to see with the other guys. I don't know what it was, um, but we went through that, and I was like, I was at that point, I was just like, it is what it is. I'm Last like, year. Yeah, it's last year. I'm halfway through the season, he started to see like, you know, they're not. Uh, I need to get him back playing more. So okay. he started playing me more, and this is the conversation we did have. He brought me into the office. He said, "Look, I know you don't. I know you don't practice hard. I, I see it, and I'm gonna let you. I, I'm fine with that as long as you keep playing the way you playing the game." Like, hmm. as long as you keep playing hard, you keep doing what you're doing, you can practice like that. But now at certain times in practice, I'm going to need you to go hard, and I, you got to go hard for me. And I'm like, okay. Hmm. That's the difference from coaches. He understood it. I think he was just testing stuff at the beginning, yeah. um, which is, you know, players got to understand that too. It's not just your personality who you got to gravitate to. It's 10, 12 other players. So, right, right. Um, he did that for me, and it was it was there. We was top five in the country basically wow. all year. Um, best, we had the best school record ever in history. Um, we went to the national tournament for the first time, and I don't know how many years they did. Oh. So it was it was great, and I want to talk about what he did for me academic wise, because like I said earlier, yeah. I wasn't a school person. Um, so he makes study hall mandatory. You know, everybody, when you first start, if you get 3.0, you're done. You don't have to do it no more. So I, first, I got 3.0. So I'm at the house chilling. I'm cool. He called me. He's like, where you at? I said, I'm at home. He said, we got study hall. I said, if you got a 3.0, I mean, I told him, if you got a 3.0, you don't have to go. He said, no, that's for them. You have to be there. Mm. You have to be there no matter what. The whole time, you have to be there. And this was, he did this my junior year. Mm. Um, and that was, it changed changed everything for me like I got my master's because of him because oh, wow. I don't think if I got them grades I would have just been focused on yeah on doing that so his name you got your master's at Lewis and Clark no I got oh, my master's oh, I was done okay. there and then I went to but Concordia you were able to because you got the grades yeah because he dope. he got me into like academics and stuff so he um, wow yeah. talk about what a coach can do I just yeah. saw a clip recently who is it I think it's um coach for the Steelers Mike Tomlin Mike Tomlin did you see that clip where he's talking about a coach like coaches talk about oh he's a kid can't learn something yeah. and all that but it's all about what the coach like your job is to teach yeah your job is to connect yeah. and 
bring that person up to where they they need to be. And so yeah. that's dope to hear, like, coach, that's what he did for you. It was like, hey, he met you where you're at. Like, oh, I see you don't practice hard, but hey, sometimes yeah. I'm going to need you to go hard. Yeah. And even the academic side, like pushing you outside your comfort zone or, mm-hmm. you know, past the standard of normal people. Yeah. And so somebody else can be like, oh, man, my coach is tripping. Yeah. He's trying to. You know, he's trying to make me do something that I don't, you know, yeah. that's not me. How can he's do choose, yeah. how he's doing it? He's picking, he's on, picking me. on me. He's picking on me. You hear that a lot. <laughs> yeah. You hear that a lot. But yeah. And so, but no, they're trying to raise up your level, mm-hmm. especially somebody who's coming down to grab you and pull you up, not yeah. not talking above you. And yeah. so he partnered with you yeah. in your life. Like, yeah. it didn't do anything for him. Oh, yeah. Well, probably winning games because you was playing. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but even, like, he did more in your life to your life, mm-hmm. right? Than it did in that moment, man. Brand, so. Brandon Renter, dude, man. He's the head coach right now at Central Washington. So. Oh, awesome, awesome. Yeah, he's a great, great guy. Awesome. Shout out, shout out, coach. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Um, national tournament NAIA. What was that like? It was fun. It was where, fun. Where did that, uh, where did they play? Kansas at? City. In Kansas City, okay. Yeah, like, it was, at that time, we was playing at the same time as the Big 12 tournament was. Nice, okay. Um, so, was, I think it was, like, in downtown, where they had the old arena. It's the old arena. Mm-hmm. I can't think of the name. remember the name, but. Uh-huh. The Sprint Center. Thanks, yeah, Brandon. Yeah. So it, it was it was it was it was great. Um we didn't do what we want what we supposed to do. Um we lost in the first round of the Ooh. tournament. Um so it was it was tough, but it was just this is a fun experience to be there. Um and then when you go there, we you have to buy the ticket basically to stay for almost the whole tournament because you don't know if you're going to. I was just chilling in Kansas City. We was there for like three, four extra days. So and it was downtown. We stayed in the hotel right across the street, so we stayed right in the middle. And Big Twelve tournament going on, oh, so no. we was you know three, four days. We ain't just we was there having fun, bonding with each other, bonding with the other teams that lost and they had to stay too. So. It was a great Networking. experience. That's yeah. good. Great network. It was a great experience. Um, it was fun. What's the biggest difference between NAIA basketball and Division Two basketball? It wasn't much. Really. Yeah. I talk no, about it because people think, yeah. oh, NAIA is the bottom of the barrel. But you look no. at uh, Langston right now. Yeah. Langston has six Division One transfers. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, they seventeen and you know, they're like they doing their thing, but. Like that's NAI basketball, yeah. Masters University right now. Like they yeah. got Division One players on their teams. Mm-hmm. Like straight could play in, yeah. you know, any almost any conference in Division yeah. One in NAIA. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not. I don't really even say it's a difference. Um, it's it's the same type. Um, we even went to play Division Ones. We almost, when I was there, we almost beat University of Idaho. Wow. Um, so it, it's the players are there. It's free education, and I think in LA I got more money outside than I did at Division Two. Mm. I got full scholarship, plus I had a stipend every 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 week or every month. I got a yeah. stipend from the school, so it was. I mean, like I said, it, it, it's not the players are there. Everything is the same. It's just you know, certain people get looked at by certain people, and certain people don't. So the talent level is the same to me. I don't even think it's much of a bigger gap for the smaller D one schools. Right. Um, but you know, coaches get to that level at the smaller schools and think they can't get those guys down there at the NAIA or Division two. But you know, free education at the end of the day. If, you, if you're good enough and you want to go D1, the quickest route to me now is to go play the D2 mm-hmm. or NAIA because they see you can play college basketball and yeah. you'll move up faster. And so that's just my opinion on, on that. I don't knock anybody for doing anything else with prep schools and all that, but I think the quickest route to get to D1 if you really want to get there is to go play right. good at a Division two. No, or in AI. Yeah. No, I love it, man. I love for people to somebody you've been through both, right? Yeah. So you have the experience and you've been in that place to tell people, yo, it's like the same. But college it's, basketball it's is college basketball. basketball. That's it's, it. It's tough basketball. Yeah. You gonna have some good fight, some good um good games, good battles. It's it's, it's dudes down there too. So. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um so when did you know that you were gonna be a coach? It's crazy. My last year at Lewis and Clark, they did a they did an article on me. Um, uh, the reporters always wherever I go, it was always people around um, gravitated to me. Like if you go to Citrus, they got in their offices, the athletic offices. Um, at that time, 
I can't remember her name right now, but they had a person in each department pick somebody to put a picture on their window wall. It's like a window where you can put the picture. And she put my she put my picture up there, and they said it's still up there. <laughs> and I was at Lewis and Clark. The reporters love me. The kids love me. Um, they did an article on me, and they um, Gary Franklin, mm-hmm. Cal Supreme, was yeah. in the article that because I played for him, and I coached the Cal Supreme. My uncle was in the article, and it was a couple other people, and they all was like, "Man, he gonna be a coach." And that's what they always used to call me when I was younger. Like, "He gonna be a coach." You know. I never wanted to be a coach. My goal still today is to be in the front office of an NBA franchise. Um, but when I talked to a lot of scouts and stuff, when I was going through the process after college trying to figure it out, they all said, man, it's different paths. I, yeah. you, I can't tell you how to get in. You just get in in mm-hmm. the sport and navigate and network. So I just, Gary Franklin got me in at Cal Supreme with coaching and started liking it more and started doing it. I have fun coaching. Uh, just at the end of the day, I want to be I'm more of a behind-the-scenes front office. Are you sure? Yeah. You're really good at coaching, man. Yeah. No, I know. I know. It's fun. It's fun. It's good. But, if, I mean, if, if I do it for the rest of my life, I don't think it'll be... You could do both nowadays. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you, you can, can do both. You know, yeah. like, man, when, you know, it's funny. Like, uh, at one point, in the middle of core, I, I think core was four or five years in. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be an agent. Mm-hmm. Got took the agent test. Mm-hmm. I had a plug with with it was with Clutch actually at the time. Mm-hmm. Like when they were just starting to get new players in, they already had signed like players who were already in the NBA. I was there during their first pre draft, mm-hmm. and I'm like, as a trainer, I was already I'm good. Yeah. I'm really good at this. And then I became an agent without kind of telling anybody. Like mm-hmm. my wife only knew. And I was okay. just studying, got it done. And then I'm like, hey, I'm an agent. They were like, okay, what players do you have? Yeah. <laughs> None. Yeah, yeah. I got to do that first? Yeah. And they're like, yeah, you, you know. And then, like, learning the process of what that was. Mm-hmm. And it was a, the, you know, I've wanted to do that for quite a while. Mm-hmm. And, but then being on the court, being a trainer, I knew I was impactful. Like, everybody's like, yo, you're good. Yeah, and yeah. I had the, the support of the community behind me mm-hmm. as being a trainer. Not saying that I couldn't be an agent, yeah. but it was like, yeah, I think I'm supposed to do this right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like right. That's weird. And so, and then core from that point on just grew, exploded. Mm. And um, because I was like, all right, let me just live in my gift. I still have my dreams and my goals, my vision of yeah. who I want to be. I'm saying mm. I want to be a GM as well. Yeah. And so, um, or manage players some capacity yeah, like right. that, right? Yeah. Same mm. same type of thing. And. It's kind of naturally happening because mm-hmm. I'm working in my gifting yeah. and I like fully committed to that. And mm-hmm. so it ends up working itself out either way. So yeah. just wanted to give you that encouragement. Yeah, hey, no. Keep doing what you're doing because yeah. it's, it's, that's the gift that's going to open up the doors to your business. Most missions. definitely. Most definitely. Yeah. Being in the, in the sport and just like you said, navigating and meeting people and just you know doing what you love. So this yeah. is what it is. And helping, helping kids at the end of the day is the most important thing for me. Um, to get them to the next, to college at least, free education, getting that degree um, in whatever they want to do in life, and just learning, learning, learning everything about it. Yeah. So you started with Cal Supreme. Uh, What level were you coaching? Uh, What was that experience like not wanting to be a coach at that time? (laughs) Uh, It was, it was, it was, it was fun just because when you walked at that time, when you walked into a Cal Supreme gym, it was, it was next level. Man. Like, what, who, um, yeah, who was in the program then? I'm trying to remember. The uh, it was this the, is 2012, it was De- 13. Uh, I think it was around there. It was DeAndre Ayton. We Man. had Brandon McCoy. We had Brandon Williams. We had um, Jordan Shackle, who was my all-time favorite, one of my yeah. all-time oh, favorite okay. as the coach. At the Cal Supreme, Jordan Shackles, like, he was just did everything. So he was on the team. We had some other players, but that was, like, our yeah, top course. seven. We had Cassie Stanley. He was a freshman on that 17 and other team. So we was, it was, the gym when you walked in, it was just, it was just different. So I think that's what really got me, like, seeing all these players. So my first year, I did the 17U unsigned senior team. So I did that. It was a great group. Have fun. Going into the second year... 
you know, we had a bunch of coaches that everybody want to be on the circuit. Everybody want to coach on the mm-hmm. circuit. So Gary was like, man, we need to get players. We need to be out there at the games. You know, we need, you know, for you got to bring yep. in the players. So he said that, and that's what I did. Like I went out there, um, got players, um, and he blessed me to be the 15, 15 and under um, coach for the EYBL and. Second year, I was a 16 and under coach for UIBL. So it, it got me into that realm of being around high level players, um, being the, to try to be at the top. So that's what I got into, and and I haven't looked back from there. Yeah. How did that transition into a high school job? Um, it just, you know, people seeing that I can do things. Um, coach, coach Devon Thomas, Coach D, who's our football coach at. Um, at, at Pius PMA, um, called Mike Law, like, man, we need a coach. Mm. And Mike Law was at Cal Supreme too, and he yeah. called Mike Law, was like, I got one for you, and um, that's how it happened. And wow. I went up there, did interviews, couple of interviews, did a practice interview, and they gave me a job, and then that's where it is. For how me. long have you been there now? This is six years. You're six. Six wow. years, yeah. And so how has the, coming into a program, you know, different, you, you've experienced multiple levels, so that's mm-hmm. awesome. Uh, coming into a high school program, what was the first things that you did to kind of, you know, develop your culture, your system in your program? 6 a.m. workouts. Yeah. 6 a.m. workouts. After school track, weight room, three, four times a week. Um, and at that time, it was, coming into that program, it was, like it wasn't, they didn't. The talent just, level wasn't. High, they just yeah. come to practice. Like okay, we got practice. That's it. So incorporating that, you gonna weed out the ones that don't really want to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that's what happened. First year we were we were bad. We were seven and twenty seven. Um, we just we just we had to. There's a lot yeah, of adjustment changes year. We yeah. Had to make. yeah. <laughs> uh, but a lot of those same players came back next year. Then we added two players. Two or three, I think it was two or three, and just a total different year. We started off like one and six, so it was like, oh man, it's another, mm-hmm. or one and five or something like that. And then we found a way, hit a switch, and I think we ended up winning. I think we went 29 and seven, and we, we won like 18, 20 games in a row, we won the CIF championship, Division 4A or AA, one of those, mm-hmm. it's 4A. And so you became a CIF champion your second year as a coach? Yes. Yeah, yeah, you good. That was the COVID year too. <laughs> that was the COVID year too. So we were in the state playoffs. We went to like the semis mm-hmm. and we lost. And then like two days later, they shut down so everything. Bad. So you couldn't even go to Sacramento. So I yeah. think if we would have made it and couldn't go to Sacramento, that would hurt. Been, yeah, that would hurt. Because that's the only place I haven't been as a coach is the Sacramento for the state. I haven't been there. So. All right. So you implemented work in mandatory workouts. The commitment to being a good team. Mm-hmm. Um, what else is it that builds a championship team? What 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 was special about that group? What was special about what you guys were doing that got you to? They they that level? they 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 bought in. They bought in. Like I said, it was you know in that summer we was running on the track, um, doing everything, weight room in the gym, six a.m., putting in the extra hours after school, individually, putting in the work. You just that's what we had to do and keep doing it and for them to just keep believing. And the first year, I didn't have a full year with those guys. I just came in, school started. Mm-hmm. The second year, we had spring, summer, fall, then the season. So that that helped a lot. Um, and just asking for perfection. Obviously, you're not going to get it because nobody's perfect. But if you preach in perfection, they're going to try their best to to be perfect every time they do something. If it's lifting a weight, if it's running with a with a um, with a um, parachute on your back, whatever it is, whatever we were doing, um, jumping tires, they were trying to do it at their best, and that's what gets them better. To and then they see they getting better, they getting stronger, they getting jumping higher, they getting quicker. They like, oh, we got weight room, let's go. Like, I want to get jump higher, so. That's that's what happened with that. And who 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 gave you that concept of seeking perfection? Is that like from Remember the Titans type stuff, or was it some a coach or somebody instilled it just, in you? Just watching, just listening to coaches, listening mm-hmm. to people, um, 
talk about it. That's why I love watching interviews and things like that, especially with, I mean, it could be anybody, but coaches in this realm with learning how to deal with players, how to navigate everything around it. Um, so just doing that was, was a big help for that and just learning it and then just following and learning your mistakes that you go through as a coach to pick apart, okay, this didn't work, okay, let's try this, and, you know, yeah. things like that. But you got to be able to listen. Um, you got to be able, you can't, you can't take constructive criticism bad. So if somebody's telling you, like, hey, you know, that doesn't work, and, you know, maybe yeah. we should try this. Or if a parent calls you and, like, oh, my son's, you could be like, okay, I hear you. Um, might not like it, but okay, maybe let's let me try this. Let me see if, if this works. Cause you know, parents are gonna call you with complaints no matter every year. <laughs> but sometimes it it could be something where you could be like, okay, no, they 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 kind of right. You're let the first me, coach to ever yeah. admit that. I like yeah. that though. That yeah. sometimes parents do have a they have a lens. You know, yeah. we always call it the parent lens, the dad lens, right? Yeah. Where we they they think their kid is better than what they are, but also maybe they're seeing something from the sideline that you're not seeing. Yeah. So taking that into. Yeah, no, it was something, something we, I mean, we lost two games in a row this year and we had some kind of some turmoil with everything. Um, and we had a little meeting, probably wasn't a good meeting to have at that time, but it, I think it kind of helped us, um, helped me um, learning better with just, coaching, you know, just being more calm or relaxed with players, um, with everything, and it actually made me uh, more calmer and better, so it was it was a great thing listening to the parents. It didn't go as great, like it wasn't smooth, but when you get back and you think into yourself and you're like, okay, let's, 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 let's try this, let's see if this works. So you had a parent meeting in the middle of the season? Yeah, like right after a game. It was it was bad. It was probably bad. Like time. impromptu, or you like it was called like no, we got I called it like it was because it was just too much going on outside okay. yeah. and players <laughs> losing players in terms of like locked in this yeah. and I'm just like, look, we got to do this now. Bad timing, but no, nah, I mean you said you got the you got the goal. I mean y'all yeah. y'all went eight in a row now. Where y'all at? Yeah, I think something something like that. Well, we lost row? this year after that, but other okay. than that, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, but it, it was it was it was great. I was able to go home and sit back and think and just go over everything, talk to the um, coach and staff, and listen to them. That's just the thing. I, I listen because yeah. you have to. You're not always right. Um, even in that moment when you're like, "No, I'm doing this," and then you think back, like, "Man, my bad. I should have." You know, you have to because everybody that's in the fold has to have the input don't mean you have to listen every time but right. at least you listen to them and then you know you do your little stuff on your own like okay nah that ain't gonna work i'm not doing it then it, you're like okay i might do this and it has helped me this year um, i'm usually more animated on the sidelines but this year i'm more calmer still animated got i mean that's not gonna change right. but I'm more a little getting more calmer and relaxed and just enjoying everything What's up? Yeah, enjoying the moment. That's yeah. that's important, especially yeah. when you have a team like you do. You, know, you yeah. guys are knocking on the door of the open division. Yeah. Um, you know, you got a high level player. And you know, we should be inside already. But yeah, you fine. should. I don't. It's only fine. three losses this year. Four. Four. Four losses, yeah, and fine. but they're all to pretty good teams. <laughs> yeah, we won a national tournament. Our <laughs> yeah. resume speaks for itself. But I'm not, yeah, I don't yeah. even want to. Yeah. yeah, we might have to sell. We're gonna move this. Uh, we're gonna move this interview up because we're gonna post this, and we're gonna at least post this clip. Yeah, <laughs> people yeah, need to hear it. Yeah. Um, no, that absolutely. Um, the question, man, that was really good stuff. There was uh, the question. Oh, if I'm if I'm a player, I'm, I'm playing for PMA. Why? Why am I so excited to play for Coach? Why I'm so excited to play for you? Um, because you get to play. You get to play. You get the. I don't restrict players like if you're 16 and you can dribble get the rebound and push the ball it makes us better now we don't have to wait for the point guard to come get it and we can get the ball he can take a couple dribbles kick ahead kick ahead bam layup i'm not stopping you from that yeah. um what i do you know preach we preach defense aggressive physical um moving the ball um, it, it's a great it's a great place to play 
you come to a game and you see us, you see we up and down, we free flow, balls moving, um, no selfishness. Um, obviously, sometimes people take shots that they right. shouldn't take. That's, that's going to happen. But for the most part, we move the ball. We, um, our, our group likes each other. You can see it on the court, off the court. They're great friends with each other. So a lot of it is not me doing it. That's a lot of the kids just liking each other, being around each other. So I give a lot of credit to my teams I've had so far since I've been there. Like, it's not really many problems we've had with that. They like each other. So you see it on the court. They play for each other. So, yeah. um, but an aspect of playing basketball, we it just we it, we have fun playing basketball, running. I don't. I want us to get up and down. I want us to press up full court, man. Get the ball, run down the court. So, you know, see if teams can can battle with us on the on the uh, what our coach says, battle nutrition. Uh, so, okay. mm-hmm. that's the fun part of it. But you're gonna get coached hard, though. You're gonna get yeah. coached very hard. What does being coached hard mean? What does that What does that mean? For, it's part of the perfection part. Mm-hmm. So you could say like, okay, I just scored two layups in a row but you just gave up a, a, a three and you didn't close out hard and then you didn't rotate right and they got you didn't get the rebound and they got another three. Now you got to come out. But if you're looking in the stands, the parents are like, hey, what you, we just scored two. <laughs> but he just gave up some, some points too. So that's just the, the part of that, uh, coaching hard. Um, like I said, you're not going to be perfect. I understand that. But, you know, it's lessons and everything. And you got to get guys ready for the next level. Because a lot of those coaches getting paid three, four, five million, two million right. a year, so you, they're not gonna let you keep getting away with them mistakes, and they lose their job. Now they family. Now he got to go from making two, three million. Now he got to be assistant to making three hundred thousand. That's a that's a big gap. Yeah. So just getting them ready for that aspect of it, mm-hmm. and uh, of college because it's it's not easy. Yeah. No, for sure. Um, we talked about. CIF title, second year. What happened in the three year three, four, five leading up to Year now? three was Kobe year. So we played okay. they've only allowed us to play our school play league games. So okay. we played those ten league games. We went ten and zero, and then we played in the first round, um, and we lost to Maranatha by like three or four. We should have okay. won, but we lost to them. So that was year three. Year four, um, we had a we brought in like four freshmen, four or five freshmen. I didn't I didn't know what to get out of them. I didn't know what I was going to get out of them. Um, we already had Tyrone. He was a sophomore. So it was him, and we had a group. So we were starting the seniors. We was playing them, and they just, it just, as for starting, they just, it wasn't getting done. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, we might as well just start all the freshmen and with Tyrone and just, if we don't do good, we're getting them ready for the future. And... The seniors at the at that time took it a little hard, but they understood what was going on, and they mm-hmm. actually played better off the bench. Mm-hmm. And we went on our little run, and we made it to the semifinals. Uh, uh, I think it was three A, three A, and we uh, we lost in the semis. We should have won. We was up by ten, the whole game, and lost in the fourth quarter. Young group started turning it over. Year five last year. Now those guys are sophomores and juniors, and um, we had. A, our best season to date. I think we had like 30, 31 wins and we won CIF championship, uh, went to state, we put us in division two. Uh, was playing. What hard. division was the CIF title in? Three. It was three. Yep. Yeah. And they moved us up to D2 for state. They moved y'all up. Yeah. Man. We played yeah. Westchester, beat them, and then we went to Orange Lutheran and they would have had us down by 18. Jeez. And then we came back and we went up by three or four, but we just mental mistakes late didn't make the plays and um they beat us there um uh, and this is year six now so man yeah. two cif titles yeah. in five years yeah yeah you're a good coach let's yeah. just say that i just thank you i appreciate that i appreciate <laughs> no that. man it's so I, I you're you're a player's coach right because you hooped yeah i think that's so important you probably still hoop right you yeah. probably get yeah, out there and still hoop. Yeah. so um i think that's important for coaches to be a part of the game still mm-hmm. and understand what these kids are going through, what they're seeing, the style of development that we have now is not what it was five years ago even. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. totally changed. And so as the game adapts, us as coaches have to adapt too. Yeah. And so it looks like you're changing with the times. You're, you're a player's coach. 
um, and you're able to breathe confidence into kids that mm. may not have been as good as they are because you said, hey, do your thing, yeah. but holding them accountable. Yeah. And then developing them at the same time, making sure they have the workouts and the, you know, commitment to what it takes to be a high school basketball player or really a college basketball. What you're doing is just preparing them for college. college, college yeah. <laughs> and so, um, that's awesome, man. What what's it like? What what is a a Tyrone man? Um, I'm a huge fan. Yeah. I'm a huge fan, and I, we talked about this before, yeah. man. I think yeah. he is a player. Um, what was it like seeing him as a freshman and seeing somebody who um, in my opinion, could be a, a mid to high major Division One player. Um, where he's going to, he's going to San Francisco, yeah. right? Yeah, he's going to San Francisco. Awesome program. Yeah. They're they're doing well this yeah, year. No, yeah, they're doing real well. They're doing really yeah. well this year as well. And so a player like that, seeing his development from the time he walked in to now his senior year, what has that experience been like as a coach? Uh, it's it's been great. Um, freshman, I didn't really get to coach him like that because it was COVID, so okay. we only could practice. Lee, you know, I wasn't at school with him and stuff like that. So getting into his sophomore year, it was it was better. Um, but you knew he wanted to be really good. He was always working, uh, and he was just he just a, he just a gym rat. And he's just a great kid, great kid. He's lovable around campus. He's on the ASV. The school loves him like he's like the golden, like a golden child up there. They everybody loves him from the principals, the presidents, the counselors, the everybody. Um, so he he's done a great job. He's the greatest player by far to ever come through that school um, on the court and off the court. Um, just a great, great, great student athlete. And um, the four years have been great with him. It's going to be, you know, tough to, to lose him because he's really like my first one I had for just four years in a right. row. Um, and he set a big standard for us as a program, and we have to continue it after him. And I know a lot of people had their doubts, and a lot of people say things like, "Oh, well, we'll see what he what they do when he's gone." But we'll 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 keep we'll keep it going, and um, because of him, um, yeah. he set a big standard there. So it's I don't want to say everything right now for him, but later on he'll yeah, get yeah. he'll get more. But it's, he's just been he's been great for us. No, that's awesome. I, I think it's important for. For parents and kids to see what it's like when somebody trusts a coach for four years, yeah. right? Because you don't see that much. Yeah. Somebody of his caliber, he could have bounced him. Yeah, for sure. Went some, well, I don't know if you go somewhere bigger from a CIF title. So, like, you know what I mean? But, yeah. like, you know, he could have, he probably had opportunities and mm -hmm. options, but he stayed down and um, is bringing, um, it brings light to his character and who mm -hmm. he is. Not saying that if you transfer, you don't have high character. Yeah. I'm saying yeah. That. But for yeah. him, um, and uh, as you as a coach, to stay committed to somebody like that, it's easier to breathe life into them and, and raise them up. And so uh, that's always dope. Man. And he so. lets me coach him. So from yelling at him to all of that, like he, like obviously he's a, he's a kid, so he's going to have his moments where he's like, oh, but for the most part, he doesn't like, he never talks back. I never... I've never, I mean, probably under his breath, yeah. <laughs> but to me, he's never, like, talked back. Nothing so, like so that. He takes it, and he just goes on with it. He might sulk and all that, but he doesn't talk back or say anything back. So he's, like, yeah. he's, like, the coach's player. So he's, yeah, it's nothing. No Ladies and gentlemen, that's what a pro looks like. And yeah. I use that word pro not just for basketball, I mean for life. Yeah. Like, like you say, he's a leader on campus, mm -hmm. leader for his team coachable those things are the things that make um make your ceiling high yeah it's not not just how high you jump and all yeah. that kind of stuff is the um intangibles that yeah. come with being a, a student athlete so yeah no nah, that's that's dope man shout out tyrone so yeah, yeah um man uh so what's what's next for coach like i know you guys got the rest of this season yeah you got some some tough games ahead of you got to yeah. finish league out yeah. and uh trying to get this bid to open division um yeah. what's what's the mindset going into the tail end of the season uh just this is where we got to grind it out and we got to take the next step forward uh, like i told the group yesterday before the game we've in league we've allowed other league opponents to feel like they can hang with us because we've been up double figures and then we'll, bear, we'll yeah. win by a little bit. And so that gives everybody else, like, okay, we can hang with these guys. Um, so I just told them yesterday we got to start 
you gotta start taking their taking their life away. Like we gotta step step on them and we gotta finish them. And I think yesterday was the start of that. We was up thirty, went by twenty two. So nice. we gotta continue that tomorrow. And then the Roosevelt is the is the, is a real huge game for us because um, everybody says that you know for us to get in we have to beat them or whatever. I don't get it, but you know so yeah. That's where we want to get. Our goal is to get to the open because we think we can beat anybody any day of the week, um, and that's just how we feel. Um, might not happen, but that's just how we feel. Competitive uh, spirit. I love going it. into it, so we want to get in the open, and that's that's our goal. So that's what we have to do, and then finish our league right. So absolutely. And not to jump too far ahead, but you got West Coast Elite coming up. Yeah. You're the uh, Under Armour 16. 16 U coach. Yeah. Um, looking forward to that and, yeah. and doing the circuit. You know, they changed the dates now yeah. Yeah. and things are a little bit different. Um, what's, what does AAU bring you that coaching at the high school doesn't bring you? Um, obviously, the, the traveling, mm-hmm. um, networking for sure, being a lot. Every time you go out to those events, it's a bunch of college coaches. So you networking with the college coaches, and it helps you with those players, um, your players at back at school, and then it also helps with just local players that might ask you about a player that you have no ties to, but you like, hey, coach, that I need, I need to go get him. Like, yeah. So things like that, um, that's what it brings for me. Um, and it's fun. Like I, I love being around top talent. Seeing the top talent, you see videos and stuff on them. And, oh, okay, he plays for this Under Armour team. I'm gonna go. Okay, I'm gonna watch him. See how see how he plays and things like that. So I, I like seeing the high level basketball. Um, so that that's great to see those players, the top ranked players that you can see in person. So yeah. Uh, do you guys have players locked in already, or roster uh, still not confirmed? I'm not really. I'm I'm involved in it, but yeah. I'm just right now. It's more of. I'm just, I read the stuff, but I'm really just locked in to what we doing. Absolutely. Um, no. So, I, I, but if I see somebody <laughs> I like, I, hey, this, you know, this player, I like them, and they'll do that. Like I said, I, I'm involved a lot in the players on the teams and stuff, mm-hmm. but right now I'm more focused. That's my main focus right now is my team, and then I'll right. see where the other stuff is. So, Absolutely. Um, you know, AAU is AAU. They're locked in uh, now, and then a month later they with another team, so it's, yeah. yeah, it's just so uh, I don't think nobody's ever locked in. I just think they're there with you at that time. But if something goes <laughs> wrong or something else happens, they'll go with another team. So yeah, yeah. Is, how do you feel about that part of the culture? Uh, it's, it's. I mean, I don't like it, but for some people, it works sometimes, and they leave a team and go to another team. Right. Uh, so it's tough. But there's no rules to it, so I mean, only rules is once a certain date is you locked in for that week. So, but yeah. other than that, you could change whenever you want, right? And right. it'd be fine. So it's it's tough, but it's it's what it is. And you know, when you know it's something is the way it is, you why well, try to fight it? You just gotta learn it. I mean, and just keep going with it. Yeah. Because if you're stressing over stuff like that, that's just it's, it's no point to. Absolutely. All right, so we're going to roll to our next segment, My Rushmore. All right, so your Mount Rushmore, um, like you said, the battles in L.A. were crazy yeah. in high school. So yeah. you're in your, you know, generational, you know, time in high school between 2004, 2008, your top four high school players of that time. Uh, no, no order, because I don't want people tripping, <laughs> but we go... I got Brandon Jennings for sure. Yeah. For sure. He was next level. Next level. Played with him too. The first three dudes I played with. So we got Brandon Jennings. We got DeMar DeRozan. You got James Harden. And the fourth one is tough, but he was next level in high school. And that's Renardo Sidney. He was just uh, like. Yeah. It's a video because we played them in a championship at a Redondo tournament, and it was a crazy dunk. I was trailing them, chasing down, and he jumped, and I jumped, and it just felt like I was just like floating with him in the air, and he dunked it, <laughs> and it was just like crazy. But those are Karina find that video. Yeah, we post it on that. YouTube somewhere. <laughs> it's on YouTube somewhere. Yeah, I don't know exactly where, but it's there, and it was just a crazy dunk. 
Um, but those are my four, four Mount Rushmore. DeMar was, played with him the longest out of all of them. Um, we played on, on West Coast All-Stars, and, and then we played for the Pumps together. So he was, like, I was around him a, a, a lot. Uh, my brother was real close with him, too, and he was our coach, so. Yeah, so I'm sorry, you talked about your brother a lot. That's what I wanted to bring up earlier. So your brother coaches. Yeah. Um, he played as well. Yeah. Was was his history just kind of following? Because you, you mentioned him a couple of times, so. Yeah, well, he, uh, he he was in uh, law school, and he started coaching with us on AAU. Then he worked for Nike and Red Bull, uh, did those things for them, and you know, he does his stuff now um, with with AAU and things like that. Okay. So he's been a big part of uh, my life, took on when he was in college. Uh, I didn't meet him until he was in college. He called, okay. you know, he found my number, got my number, called my mom, and wow. ever since then has been, you know, locked in with him. So and he started coaching us so with DeMar and... Like I said, they was real close. Like I said, they would go work out together. And, um, and he would work him out and stuff like that. So, yeah. No, no, no. yeah. Okay. No. Yours? Uh, huh? Yours? Mine, so I think I, I'm going to have to go to my, my time yeah. in high school. Yeah. And so I grew up in the IE. Mm -hmm. So I'm not even going to do LA. I'm going to do yeah. the IE yeah. during that time. So this is 2000 to 2004. I'm old. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> 2000 to 2004. So in my time... Um, it was when I was a freshman, Jamal Williams gotcha. was a monster at Corona Center, mm -hmm. absolute monster. Yeah. He ended up going to University of Washington. I think he yeah. coaches at Washington mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Jamal Williams was a monster. Uh, Sean Marshall, okay. who's now, you know, Pro Visions, yeah. Uh, yeah. he's a trainer, played yeah. overseas for years. Sean Marshall was at Eisenhower. Okay. Him, he had a Corey McJensen, and they had a guard who were nice. But um, those two for sure were like the people we looked up to. Um, somebody I played against was uh, Anthony Goods. Mm -hmm. Went to Stanford. I don't yeah, Anthony Goods. He's a, uh, you know, Swiss coaches. Yeah. So it's Jordan, and then Anthony's the other dude who, okay. who runs it with him. Gotcha. So he's overseas. So he plays overseas, and he does all the overseas footage and stuff. Gotcha. And a lot of their stuff. I like so, that. I like that. Um, I like that. Anthony man. Goods was nice, man. He went to Corona Centennial as well. So those three, who else was in the IE during that time? Trying to make sure I don't forget anybody. Oh, man, what's this kid's name? I can't remember his name right now. He went to uh, Temescal Canyon. No, he went to Chaparral, which was in Temescal. Mm. Had a strap mm. pulling up from the white line, like Curry. Mm. But back in back the in early the 2000s. Yeah. Ooh, man, his name. Cannot think of his name. So I'm going to skip him. And then I'm going to have to go with Tim Denson. So Tim Denson. Okay. Um, he went to Santiago. That's where I went to high school. Mm -hmm. Tim um, ended up going to Fullerton College. Mm -hmm. That's the year Fullerton College had the perfect record, won the state title, 33. Mm -hmm. You know, he was the point guard. Yeah. Ended up going to Colorado State, finished at Cal State, San Bernardino. But okay. man, Tim was Tim was cold. Oh, Tim was good. cold. He was, yeah. I should have I should have been. I known him. We were on the same AAU team since mm -hmm. I was like in seventh grade. And his pops would do all these workouts. Same thing. Like, mm -hmm. mine was more like I didn't know what I was like. I didn't know mm -hmm. I was supposed to do that stuff. He's like, hey, we're going on Saturday. We're going to go run this hill. Yeah. I'm like, well, I got to run the hill for it. Yeah. Like, I'm going to just go hoop. Yeah, yeah. I would just hoop. I wouldn't do all the workouts and, mm -hmm. like, instruction. His pops would do a lot of, like, actual work with yeah. it. And so I went to a couple workouts with him. I was like, man, I wish I was just worked out. Like, mm -hmm. I grinded, like. I'm the opposite of you. Like, I'm the hardest worker in yeah, practice. Yeah. But back then, I wasn't performing some of the games. So, <laughs> hey, figure that out, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. maybe I shouldn't have been the opposite. Yeah. But it finally came together when I got older. But, yeah. um, nah. So, yeah, that's that's my four. I feel like I'm forgetting somebody. But, yeah, it's always, yeah. yeah. No, so those yeah. are the four that, that uh, stand out. I mean, Darren Collinson, too. My bad. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Tim. I'm taking you off putting Darren up there yeah. for obvious reasons. Yeah. Darren Collinson, yeah. I, he was my last game. So, my junior year, right after my junior year, I moved to Kansas. Mm -hmm. I have my senior year out there. So my junior year, we played Darren Collison. He ended my high school career out here. Mm -hmm. Played at Awanda and, uh, mm -hmm. in the playoffs. Him and this dude named David Carter, who was nice. But Darren, Darren was nice. He was only yeah, a sophomore he was, uh, then. I, he, was a I, he was a freshman then, I think. 
I got to oh. throw a 4B in there, too. Drew Holiday, I forgot okay, about Okay, yeah. Holiday. I was going to ask about yeah, that. I forgot about So, he's Drew in the Holiday. Valley, so I'm going to let it. Because okay. you said L.A., so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll right, say L.A. Right, that's more yeah. of the Valley. Uh, Apparently, yeah. the L.A. and the Valley ain't yeah. the same. Okay, yeah. It's still okay. L.A. County. So I was right. I was right. I was <laughs> yeah, right. Yep. Yeah. We're going to move to our next segment called Fix the Net. All right. So, a misconception about yourself or basketball that you want to set straight for the people. <laughs> um, dang. Uh, so something I guess that people say. Um, I, well, I am a high head, so it's like <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it's really no. I don't think it's really nothing bad out there that I know of. No, no. So it doesn't have to be about you. How about basketball in general? Just like uh, you know. Hey. Oh, okay. Hey, you. So, hey, yeah, go ahead. So, a lot of my friends, because um, we have our group chats, and we, mm-hmm. they think I'm a LeBron hater, but I'm... You are. No. According I, to our conversation earlier, you're 100% LeBron. No, I'm just a Kobe, <laughs> I'm just a Kobe fanatic, and like, like I said, when they brought the puppets out, that really, like... When you when I'm with somebody, I'm with him. So I was with Kobe, and I'm like, okay, I'm no LeBron, but I see his talent, I see yeah. his greatness, and that takes away nothing. But when it's we gonna talk about him and Kobe, I'm I'm gonna just go with Kobe. You could be right, right. but I'm gonna just go with Kobe. But I I I recognize his greatness, so it's just I'm just <laughs> taking Kobe. Though. All right, so it's all cleared up. The net is fixed. He is not a LeBron hater. He's a Kobe lover. Yeah. Respect. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Respect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so your turn. You're the interviewer. I'm the interviewee. Two questions for me. Could be about anything in the world. So your high school experience, um, how did that go for you? My high school experience, um, same thing. I was on freshman as a freshman. Mm-hmm. Um, average a triple-double. Points, mm-hmm. assists, and turnovers. Um, <laughs> I was. I, <laughs> I threw some great passes. I threw some yeah. terrible passes. Yeah. Um, Went to JV um, that that next year. Like, there was nobody to tell me how this was supposed to go. I was just hooping. I had a great AAU program, Norco Tar Heels, um, growing up. Um, kind of ended when it was like we were a group and we were Who's we were the a, director. Uh, it was uh, Randy uh, Randy Cole and Henry. There was Woodard. another Tar Heels when I was. San, that was San Bernardino. They were Tar Heels too. So that's that, where Malcolm, uh, Malcolm yes, Lee. Malcolm played. Lee. Yep. I, yeah, yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. So that's okay. how San Bernardino. Gotcha. So our group, we got, we all played NJB basketball mm-hmm. back in the day, and we were the All Star team, and we turned that All Star team pretty much into our club team, mm-hmm. or you know, to our AU team, yeah. Norco Taros, and we were like number two in the state. Like we mm-hmm. we played against um, uh, Aaron Afalo. Okay. Like that's who kept smacking us in the state championship. Yeah. They beat us two years in the California state games, but um, so. High school, um, yeah, went to JV, um, six man. Mm-hmm. I, I was a heck of a six man. Mm-hmm. Uh, my whole career, pretty much, I was a six man mm-hmm. until senior year. Um, but yeah, I was a six man. Um, I think I worked my way into the starting lineup at the mm-hmm. end of it. We had some juniors on JV. Um, but then that's when I started putting work in. So I started doing all my strength and conditioning exactly. stuff. I was like 5'9, that's when I started to dunk, mm-hmm. had like 30 something inch vertical. Um, that's when I started just working, and um, so that next year, my junior year, um, and I I beat out a bunch of seniors to mm-hmm. make varsity, um, and had a great junior year. Was a six man, started some games. I played against Anthony Good and mm-hmm. and um, put some clamps on him. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he remembers that, but I slowed him <laughs> down. <laughs> he didn't hit, he didn't hit his average. We yeah, lost the game. Yeah, he didn't hit his average, and then that's when I moved to Kansas though. And so my pops had a, had a job promotion. He worked for Boeing, moved us to Wichita, Kansas. Like, literally, my family moved in January. They let me finish the season. I live with my godparents. And um, they gave me the choice. They said, you can stay here with your godparents. My pops actually lived out. My, my biological father lived out here in the valley. Mm-hmm. Like, you can move with your dad um, or you can move to Kansas. I'm a mama's boy, so I'm going to Kansas. Kansas. Yeah. Yeah. And so I actually went to Sunrise Christian okay. Academy before okay. it was Sunrise. So same coach, Kyle Linstead, who's the coach now, was a coach then, but it was in the beginning stages of becoming what it was. Like they were just playing in the Christian league, but they had some, they always had some talent. And so mm-hmm. I went there for six months. Um, 
because that's where my parents like, oh, you want to go to a private Christian school mm. out here, blah, blah, blah. Um, most, the best part of time of my development ever. Mm. There was nothing to do out there, and the coaches were gym rats, and I was in the gym. Literally, the principal used to, have to kick me off the court mm. every single day. I would just hoop, hoop, hoop. Mm. And so I got really good, and then right a week before the season started, some people were telling my dad, oh, he needs to go play in the city league. He doesn't need to play at a private school. He's not going to get any looks. I already had a Division II offer from Washburn University. Gotcha. And so um, I should have took it. I was, this is like October of my senior year. And my dad's like, oh, you got Division I's looking at you. We yeah, just did yeah. Wichita State camp, Tulsa. There were schools that were interested, never yeah. called me or nothing. Yeah. Wa uh, Washburn like offered mm -hmm. me a scholarship. And um, so I left, went to Wichita East. Um, so I don't know if you remember Taj Gray played at Oklahoma mm -hmm. back in the day. Uh, Corleone Young, he was like a, he he got drafted out of high school and then fell off like real quick. But there, that's like one of the oldest schools in Kansas, mm -hmm. whatever. So I went there, um, had a week to go get a starting spot. I think I got that starting spot within two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, the dude, my guy Joe, I dunked on him in oh. practice two oh. two days in a row. Like, you gonna let him dunk on you yeah, every day? Yeah, yeah. And so uh, got got a got that starting spot. We won city league, and um, lost in the playoffs to one of our. It was somebody I was in our league, high tie, and um, yeah, man, that was it. I ended mm. up going to Dodge City Community College after that. So yeah. high school was fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah, um, I got to play a lot. Like you know, I was always yeah. on the court, and mm. I was valued, and um, you know, started dunking on people my senior year. So. Yeah, that's always real fun. fun. Yeah, that's always fun. <laughs> so, yeah. That's always fun. Um, what do you, do you know much about the new playoff system they're trying to go to for CIS? No. There's another new one happening. Oh, yeah, let's talk doing, about it. They're doing a, yeah, they're doing a new. It's the football playoff system where you don't know where you, what division you're going to until after the season. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they're doing the computer stuff, and I know. Like uh, the Bosco football coach, I know he doesn't like it and stuff like. So I want to know if you knew about it or anything. No, I mean, so I'm aware of it from the football. They're trying to do the same thing with basketball. For all sports. I think it's amazing. You like it? I do. This is why. If we're going to sit here and try to do comp competitive equity, and so teams that, I I think it depends because I think I love how you built your program. You started in four and you mm -hmm. had to build it up. You know, being a new coach. Um, but also, I feel like there's teams sometimes that stack like there. It, it's interesting because now I'm actually thinking about it. I just, I just, it's I, just the aspect of like I see it in football teams schedule like easy games just to get wins. Yes. Like just so they can or play lesser teams so they don't have to go to a certain division. Like yeah. if you're a top team, like play top guys, yeah. but it just, that could be the effect where you see teams that usually would have been in the open in Division One now is in Division Six or Seven, yeah. or whatever, yeah, exactly. our lowest division, we have five or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's just the, and the people don't want to play certain people, like, yeah. You know, if you got a team, like, go, go play people. I think the calculation, whatever that calculation they make needs to be good that it takes that into an effect like yeah. you know previous years and the talent level like it does put that if we're putting our trust into a, a calculation i think a, the eye test we can we can yes yeah, so, yeah, because we can outthink that system yeah. like you said yeah. um you definitely see that a lot and so that's why i'm like part of me is like i didn't think about them scheduling a week schedule yeah i was thinking like i don't know if you good you play the games you're gonna end up in the top bracket anyway yeah. so the best play the best yeah because when we, so when I was the assistant at Heritage in 2017, they, that's when the open division was 16 teams, mm -hmm. and we got thrown in at the 15 seed. And it was only because of one game. We beat St. Augustine mm -hmm. at St. Augustine and Torrey Pines that year, but we went one and three. We lost to the three other teams we played, which was Olu, um, that team from uh, Bishop O'Dowd, and some team from Texas that had some like 35 year olds on the team. <laughs> Not really, but there was, yeah, there was yeah. grown dudes. Yeah. And um, because that one game, mm -hmm. they threw us in the open. We beat Winward twice that year and when they had Jules Bernard. Mm -hmm. But it was that one game. We ended up playing Sierra King in our first game mm -hmm. with Marvin Bagley, Cody yeah. Wright, like yeah. the yeah. squad, their senior yeah, year. That was squad. Only lost by three. So it was a good, yeah, game. Was a good game. But in our division, we were 2AA. We had 2AA that mm -hmm. year. 
the championship game of the CIF title, the score was 35 to 33. We averaged 75 points. Dang. And we built heritage from nothing. Yeah. Like yeah. those developed freshmen, we got Jawan Harris Dyson, we transferred in. Yeah. But everybody else was developed from mm. the bottom up yeah. to be there. And it was like, man, that was our opportunity. And so I have this love hate with the open. Yeah. Just from when I was coaching yeah. over there. But uh no, it's, I think it's always that's interesting. I mean, I just I would love to see how other states do it where it, yeah. it is competitive and kinda we have our own system, like the fact that we have eleven divisions, so there's yeah. eleven CIF champions yeah. every year is kinda yeah. confusing to me too. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. so yeah, no, that's a that's a good thing. I'm gonna look more into that. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. Good speaking point. Yeah. Awesome, man. Uh, so we got a 24-second shot clock. That's your camera right there. Let the people uh, know where they can find you and any message that you have for them. And uh, Yeah. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Dante, D-O-N-T-E underscore Archie, A-R-C-H-I-E. Um, if you want to come to a St. Pius, St. Matthias Academy game, um, you can come check us out. Um, appreciate you guys having me. Um, Everybody um, be in love, wolf love, have fun, enjoy life, and that's it. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. That's all we got today, folks. See you next time. Peace.